In his letter from Birmingham jail, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. answers the charge that he is an extremist with a question. So the question is not whether we will be extremist, but what kind of extremist will we be? Will we be extremist for hate or for love? That image, it sticks with me because he doesn't deny being an extremist. He simply redefines the context of the accusation. He's an extremist for love. Do you think we could be extremists for love? Extremists in prayer and in intercession and loving our neighbor? In Romans 12, 17, Paul encourages us, repay no one evil for evil. And Peter gives the same admonition in 1 Peter 3 and 9 saying, do not repay evil for evil or curse for curse, but on the contrary, bless knowing that you are called so that you may receive a blessing. Answering evil with evil perpetuates a cycle that humanity is hard pressed to break. And let's address the elephant in the room by stating that unspeakable evil has been committed in the past few weeks. And our job as the church is not to justify evil, and it isn't to respond to sinful acts with further sinful acts, but rather through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can respond with blessing and prayer and love. Emotions are high. Things are tense. I'm feeling it. My kids are feeling it. And I know that you and your family are feeling it too. And if you'll allow me to be honest, I know that some of your families are feeling it more than I could even imagine. And that the uncomfortable conversations I'm having with my children pale in comparison to the conversations some of you have to have regularly. And right now, people are acting and speaking and posting on social media from a place of anger and stress, angst, sadness, despair, loneliness, fear, or doubt. And that's just mentioning a small number of the completely appropriate, God-given emotions that we're all capable of, not to mention the darker, sinful aspects of our nature that are stirred up during these times. So why talk about it? I'm talking about it so that we can pray about it. Now, there's nothing political in this video, so if you're hearing something on the right or on the left, then check the balance of your speakers because this is an attempt to encourage prayer from a biblical position. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus gives us the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, and he also addresses what to do with our anger within the church, telling us that if you go to bring your gift to the altar and you remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift on the altar and go away. Be reconciled with your brother and then come offer your gift. Before they could worship, they had to make things right. Before they could worship, they had to repent. This is all of us. This is men and women, rich and poor, Republican and Democrat, red or yellow, black or white. And maybe your issue isn't with an individual, but maybe your problem is with a group. You need to take that to God. This past Sunday was Pentecost Sunday, the birth of the church, the undoing of the Tower of Babel, the place where language was confused and nations were st scattered. On Pentecost, they were unified, speaking together, glorifying God in a heavenly tongue, men from all over the known world, unified by a move of God. You know, Dr. King said the following in his famous I Have a Dream speech from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. He said, I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. This 
is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. Now, there's a lot in that speech that I love, and there's a lot in this particular paragraph when he says that with this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. Isn't that what we face in the world right now? A mountain of despair? Despair over race relations and politics and violence and sin? But Dr. King declared that the mountain would be transformed into a stone and the despair would be transformed into hope. Now, that, that vision, that image of hewing, hewing takes, that takes work, it's tough. It's the act of chopping or cutting. Think of swinging a pickaxe and slamming it down against a solid piece of granite, a, a mountain, if you will. And then he goes on saying, with this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. Friends, I want to be a part of that symphony of brotherhood. I know in heaven that we will see every nation, tribe, and tongue gathered around the throne. But in the meantime, I want to pray and worship and work with that same diverse group that will be represented for all eternity. Now I want to leave you something that you can pray for. And I could offer an endless list of things that we could pray for tonight, but but I'm going to keep it short. First, I want us to pray a prayer of repentance. Personally, I believe in naming my specific sins out loud to God when I repent. Not as though my admission of my actions or the thoughts that I've dwelled upon are going to surprise Him. But when I make that confession out loud, I leave nothing hidden. And then I also pray that God would forgive me of my secret sins or the acts, prejudices, and habits that have become so normal that I don't even think to acknowledge those things to God. I ask Him to expose those things to me so that I can be forgiven and then move forward, overcoming by the power of the Holy Ghost, the sinful man I used to be. Pray for unity. Pentecost took place when they were of one mind and they were in the same place. They shared the same space and their unified focus was on a singular thing, that the power of God would follow them. But the Holy Spirit does not fill places where there is division. Pray for peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. Pray that men and women of integrity and character would be emboldened by the Spirit of God to make peace. Be a peacemaker yourself. Before you speak or post, ask what your purpose is for doing so and then step beyond your point of view and your experiences and ask if this will bring peace. You may not get it right every time, but still pray that God would make you a peacemaker. Pray for reconciliation. To reconcile means to restore friendly relations between. 2 Corinthians 5.18 tells us that Christ reconciled us to him and that he then gave us the ministry of reconciliation. It's a step beyond peace and it's a step towards brotherhood. It's not a simple prayer that fighting would stop, but that relationships would be restored. Or maybe for some, formed for the first time. I want to take a moment now and lead you in prayer from your home. Jesus, we come before you now knowing that you are the hope of the world. God, you came offering many things, healing and hope and salvation, and we pray that all those things would be present. But I I pray for hope and peace right now. God, for myself first, I pray a prayer of repentance, asking God that you would forgive me. God, forgive me of my sin. God, forgive me of the words I've spoken, the acts I've committed, 
the moments when my anger has gotten the best of me, the moments when it was convenient to not speak the truth and instead I lied. God, forgive me for the moments, God, when, God, I've lost my temper towards my children, God, or I've been hateful towards my wife, or I've been disrespectful towards the proper authority. God, I pray that you would forgive me of the secret sins that are in my heart. God, the things I don't even think to acknowledge. And the things, God, that in your work of purifying me with fire, God, those things that I've not yet brought out. God, I pray you would forgive me of those things and expose them to me, God, so I can move forward, God, to be a person that is uh, moving forward in the Holy Ghost. God, I, I pray, Lord Jesus, that there would be unity. God, I pray that there would be unity in the church. God, as the divisions of the world creep in and as the division that sin causes creeps into the church, God, I rebuke that, God, and I pray that the church would be unified, that every member of the church, God, in the local assembly and across the world, that we would be unified, that we would be together seeking after the same thing, seeking after a move of God, seeking after oh, the Holy Ghost to fill us up, God, and for our old nature to be changed and the old old man to be put to death and God for us to be new creatures and new creations in you God that our hearts of stone would be replaced with hearts of flesh God let us be a people that are unified arm in arm working together to do the work that you have called us to do God I pray for peace God, I pray for peace in the world around us. God, I pray where there is unrest across this nation and across the world. But God, I pray for the unrest here in the States. God, I pray that the voices of peace would begin to rise up, that the voices of the church would begin to rise up. Lord Jesus, not to, not to simply quell the anger, God, and not to simply calm people down, but rather, God, that peace would be established so that the work of God can be performed in this place, God, and the changes that need to be made, God, let them be made and let there be men and women of godly wisdom and godly knowledge. Let them be brought to the forefront in these discussions and let them begin to speak. God, raise up God, someone like you did with Dr. King, Lord, that can speak to the situations of the world, God. I pray that men and women would rise to the challenge of being peacemakers. And God, I pray for reconciliation. God, even right now in churches where there were men and women where brothers have been fighting against brothers, God. And there's been aggravation because of things that have been spoken, oh God, whether it was spoken out of anger or malice or being insensitive, or maybe God had simply just wasn't known, God, and a wedge was driven between. Help us to begin to reconcile with one another. God, to make things right because you reconciled us with you. And God, you said that while we were sinners, you died for us. And you say that we hated you and we were your enemies. You gave your life for us, God. You reconciled us to you. And now you've given us that same ministry of reconciliation. God, help me to reconcile my relationship with my brother, with my sister. God, help it to be restored, God. Lord, and for those, God, maybe through choice of their own, or God, maybe it was the circumstances within which they were raised. That, God, they have never been taught and they've never understood of seeing the God-given value of life in men and women of other races. I pray conviction would grip our hearts if we look at anyone with a different skin tone or from a different part of this world, God, if we would look at them and think of them as less than. Convict us, God. Convict the best of us, God, if that is anywhere in our hearts, Lord Jesus, and help us to move forward, reconciling ourselves with you and reconciling ourselves to one another. God, you did not create us to be divided, but rather to be unified. And you unified the church at Pentecost and let there be a new spirit of Pentecost that would sweep this world. God, I pray blessings on homes. I pray peace upon people. God, as people gather across this nation to practice their First Amendment right, God, and let their voice be heard, I pray, God, that peace would settle over those protests and over those demonstrations. I, God, I pray a spirit of reconciliation would be upon each and every one of us. And I pray that we be unified in the common goal, Lord, of seeing your kingdom, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. God, we praise and bless you. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray.